I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz. Oh my God! <laughs> the show is over. Yeah, we made it. Wow. So good. Here we are at the bitter end, guys. Now. Bow, bow, bow. Wow! Weddings and vows and tears. I and love the drama. Wow! 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 It's so worth it. It was so worth it. Ten episodes in, we are here at the finale. Unbelievable. Of Love Is Blind on Netflix, guys. Welcome to our after show. If you are joining us for the first time, hello. We are your illustrious the first panel. Time now? Well, you know, yeah. better late than never, right? Sure, yeah. This like, is the episode to watch. You've been, if you've been missing out on our recaps all season long, I just I don't know what to tell you. Make mm-hmm. sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss them anymore because you know there's going to be a season two after how amazing this finale yeah, was. We're going to force Flobo to come back. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> I wow, think wow, the worst wow. I've loved from now on. <laughs> no, you're hooked now. Don't even start that. Uh, maybe I am, but I can't do this. I can't. My heart was on a line the entire time. Things I thought was yes with no's. No's were yeses. I'm all upside down. I have not been, I'm not this excited to hear the answers as I am. Sorry, I can't, I can't even talk. I can't even talk. I was more on edge of my seat waiting for the reveal here than Bachelor than any other mm. show. I don't know. There's like the tension was just built up. Yeah, something about the editing. All the families are there. The ministers the, there. Like, are they going to say yes? It was <laughs> everything <laughs> and more. I know we're we're here wow. just like giving you audibles because we just don't have the words. But we're going <laughs> to find the words to talk about it. Uh, first and <laughs> foremost, I want to introduce myself. I'm your host, Christine Alexis, and I'm here with. One of my favorites, Flobo Boys. I thank you so much for inviting me because this is a whole new world for me, and this ride man. is nuts. Thank you. Man. People oh are suplexing gosh. people's emotions today, Flobo. I know, man. Give me a cage match. I understand <laughs> those. A lot easier than this. And the guru of all things love on here. Wow. Mike Feeling. Thank you. What's up, guys? I'm, I'm very, very, very pleased with this finale. I'm very pleased, too. I'm, I'm glad you're pleased, man, because you know, for you. a while there, you're on the thank fence. Thank you. Yeah, I, th- I mean, you know, we talked about it. A couple of the... Middle episodes were kind of, nah, they kind of fumbling along or whatever, and we got some of the backstory, but it, it delivered in the end. Yeah, gosh, I just, I don't even really know where to begin, um, but I, I'm, I just, We are evil we, for we, cheering we, for all the no's in the truck. We, we were I cheering know. for the no's, yeah. We were, if yeah. you guys. Very uh, exciting. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say, Flobo? That cliffhanger started with, with Damien and Jane Enoch, who started there, because I really yeah. thought that he was going to be like, of course, right. I will totally say yes. Right. But he said no, and I was wow. like. Okay, there's a whole game's change. I can't believe I believed in love. I thought they were gonna work it out, and they didn't. Are you were you surprised, Mike, that Damien said no? Yeah, absolutely. I get it. I understand his reasoning, but I'm pretty surprised. Kind of the story arc that they were trying to go with was, you know, she was kind of ruthless and and mean sometimes and wishy washy, and it was kind of a roller coaster. But in the end, she really came back and centered herself down. And really realize that this is the man she's supposed to be with. And then Damien was like, nope, I don't want that. And I was like, whoa. Said, he, like that. he said, no, mama, too little, too late. Right. He did not I was, way that, too that was late. I was pretty shocked. <laughs> no, I was mama. pretty shocked. He didn't say it that way. Um, I, I, too, was very shocked. Uh, we spoke about this on our last recap, that we were in for a doozy, considering, like you mentioned, the whole last episode was about Damien professing his love for Gina, right. right. trying to get her to be at the same page that we thought he was on right. about Oof. spending a future together, yeah. and lo and behold, it all just proved to be too much for well, him. Well, I thought they were setting us up for a red herring completely, right? But then, just like we correctly observed, why have her answer first then? Mm-hmm. So it makes me want to know if production knew the people's answers before they got up in front of everybody. Because if you did, you have to have her answer first or else there's no cliffhanger potential. Or you got to give a different couple yeah, the last. Yeah, so that way you can tell them the guy in the van to bring the camera with the an infinite cable to chase her out when yeah, she yeah. Runs outside the door. <laughs> she ran uh, Ooh, through the woods. Well, yeah. You know, that's Where was a, she going? That's to a the really highway? great point. Yeah. About, you know, the way this was edited with the responses with her going first. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, let's talk, we can talk a little bit about why Damien said no. We saw this all season long. They mm-hmm. were so hot and cold. Um, you know, uh, what's it called? They, they really kind of reached, like, uh, a good point together towards the very end. But it just, it just really seemed like it wasn't enough. And I personally don't blame him because... There hasn't been enough consistency on Giannina's end to really mm-hmm. commit to saying yes to this for the rest of your life. You made that abundantly clear. You're not a fan of G and how genuine she is, or lack of genuine genuine she is. 
don't know. I mean, listen, I'm not alone in my critiques on Giannina. I saw a lot of chatter on Twitter <laughs> about people not being a fan of her dramatics. I, I think the, the the poetry and the running out there like a Maury Povich contestant, that's all her brand. I, I think it's authentic for her. It's just over top for most of us. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's going to continue on Instagramming, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, but, you know, in the end, his theatrics were a little over the top, too, to me. It seemed like a it's lot fair. of the stuff they were saying was very scripted. I will always love you, G. All the way. It's like, bro, this is not how people talk. You know, he's I being do. very over dramatic with all of it, it, I thought, too. It was very weird to me that in his interview after the fact, he said that their love story wasn't over. And, it's like, over. he seemed very hopeful for their future. I'm like, bro, there's no coming back from this. Yeah, yeah, it's over for sure. And well, it's fine. Well, the Hollywood story is that five years from now, they're at an Instagram influencer convention. They meet about Cup Again and it's all kinds of <laughs> No? <laughs> love is blind, guys. No? All right, fine. If Love is Blind could be up for, like, an Emmy, I'm pretty sure Jamie was, like, <laughs> gunning for this. Because right. I'm sorry. That girl threw me for a loop. But that started that started this episode off on a, a, a bad... Awesome. Uh, awesome note. Awesome okay, we'll note. Say awesome note. <laughs> it just... It definitely let us know that we were in for some surprises. Yeah. If uh, it was five yeses, that would have been so boring. That was I my know. prediction, by the way. I feel kind of upset and embarrassed. I said, everyone's going to say yes. <laughs> oh. We gotta give you a little You'll learn. That. You'll learn. That's not how these things go. Sorry, guys. I believe in love too much. <laughs> well, the shows. I'll always love you, fans. I'll always love you. Well, this oh, is a good yeah. transition into a couple that did find love together. No. We got Amber and Barnett. Woo. And I gotta say, going into this series, I did not see them being one of the only two couples who actually went all the way together. Absolutely fair. That was one I was going in going, okay, they may be more likely to say no, but after that first no with Damien and Jeannie, I was like, oh, wait, this is definitely going to be a no. Oh, my goodness. But you know what? They're perfect for mm. each other. The families came together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. They, The only real stress in their relationship was her monetary situation or debt, whatever you want to call it. It's and a big stress. Half couples, you know, in this country divorce over finances. Yeah. They divorce over finances, but you don't divorce going into a wedding knowing the situation and saying, okay, I love you. I can take your problems on and we can fix them together. Like, mm -hmm. we just got to get on a financial plan and work it out. It's not the end of the world. I feel like a lot of the divorces and the problems in marriage come from not talking about money while you're together and not working together on things as you're married. Not the stuff, as long as it's not hidden coming into it, I don't think it's as big as a problem. So I think there's a very surmountable issue to come into a relationship. Well, take a step back, though. If you're dating someone that you knew they were broke, a lot of people would say, I won't date someone who's broke. Right? Or they'll date, but they won't marry them. That's, that's what I'm saying. This is different because it has a little uh, pod thing, but I think that's a dating question people have. I, no? it, it all depends. Uh, sure. It depends on what you want, who the other person is, and what your goals are. If Barnett's goals are, I'm super attracted to her, we have a great connection, I'm down to be the provider and protector and whatever. I really just want you know, a stay-at-home mom for our kids, and that's what she wants, then it matches perfect, and who cares? Mm. It all depends. If you if if you want somebody who's crazy career ambitious and oriented, then obviously Amber is not necessarily the person for you. I also read in some one of the articles that part of the reason why she was out of work and stuff was that she was injured. So we don't ne know necessarily where her head is at with all of that. You know, coming into the show injured, she it said she had to wear a boot and stuff, so she couldn't mm -hmm. work as the mechanic and, and things like that. So uh, I don't know. I just think that the tension they tried to give with the two of them. You know, the real drama for them was with Jessica. So the drama that they tried to bring for the two of them isn't really isn't really crazy. Mm. It's interesting you brought up that she was injured, you know, before shooting this because did we mistakenly hear towards the end of the episode her saying like she thought she would have been in jail or something before that being was, on this? That, maybe, was maybe she because, in a fight? I don't know. I thought maybe that was a joke. Like if he said no, she was going to get him or something right. like that's that. That's, oh. that's the way I took it. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. Ooh. Yeah. Why? I did too. Shout out to me reading way too did into that. steal a tank? Or? <laughs> I don't know. Where Amber strikes me as I the type to, to like these. throw hands. She, Absolutely. She told Jessica, "I will destroy you if yeah, you come for my man." Yeah, they really remember close to before they kissed. Range. Before yeah, they before, kissed. The, before Jessica kissed her. No. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, we we know now. My my theory was wrong. You know, the couples weren't at each other's weddings because oh, yeah. we didn't see Jessica and Mark in the pews, and vice versa that with these so weddings. Good for they shouldn't I have been anywhere near. Oh, come on, that would have been great. 
<laughs> I still think it would have been great. We are evil. Also not mad yeah, at how that's the worst are. setup that we could have. You guys Let's have led, that. Let me do a buzzsaw, dude. I no, didn't yeah, yeah. thought some like lovey dovey stuff, some some harps and everything. Nah. Yeah. But to your point, Mike, we did get a lot of fake outs, but ultimately they chose each other. There were a lot of fake outs in all of these weddings back and forth. Little looks and little, we, I, yeah, I couldn't tell. I mean, Barnett nearly didn't show up. So that was, that was, you that know, was interesting. There, was our, there was our fake out. Yeah. yeah. He texted me that he had cold feet. Yeah. That story was pretty interesting, too, seeing like the, the first no, and then it comes up and her upset and distraught, being like, Yeah, I got some texts from Barnett. I'm like, Is everyone saying no? Red alert. You know, yeah, that was but a cool setup. That can also be a red herring. Like, I called twice and you didn't pick up. Did his phone die? Was in the other room? I don't pick up every time somebody calls uh, my phone either. Yeah. I don't know. He could have been talking. But talk- on your wedding day? No, no. On the we- on the night before. Oh. He could have been talking to his, his buddies like calming down just trying to relax really stressed out so that's another thing that could very easily be read into that doesn't really mean anything true just with that whole scene i was just thinking of sex in the city with carrie and big you know he's like really nervous in the car and he's like come on pick up i need to i need to hear your voice i need to be sure and then you know we all know how that ends if you watch the movie yeah well did not oh wow so then i'm definitely not gonna spoil it for you chris north come on man yeah, big. Come on. I know what it is. Moving on, <laughs> man. The 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 most unexpected. J Lo, have you watched Sex and the City movie? Who hasn't watched? Damn that? it, Thank me you. obviously. Yeah, and you were supposed to be the guy about love. Like that's one of the biggest love stories. Come on, Mike, get it together. <laughs> Looks like okay. I have the most in person of the love. Sorry, I only time. watch real love stories <laughs> Ooh, on love reality. Love. Yeah, yeah, edited to perfection with yeah. sound bites galore. Exactly, that's how oh, I like oh, my yeah. love polished. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, Dan. Sure, Dan. All right, guys, we have to get into Kelly and Kenny because wow, 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 I am still... That's the biggest surprise. Lord, what a surprise. That's the biggest shock, I think, of any of them. I, I got to give myself credit, though, because I, I kind of... <laughs> yeah, you mis- did. I kind of How hinted surprised at this. can you be? Well, I'm surprised because it actually happened. <laughs> I was right. I was like, wow, what? I was actually right about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly and Kenny... We're going strong all season long. They were seemingly like a sure thing. Yeah. There were some doubts about um, the physical connection. And towards the last few episodes, we did see Kelly being a lot more vocal about the fact that she wasn't quite infatuated with Kenny. She loved him, but she wasn't that over the moon, I'm like acting silly, don't know myself kind of love, which is that what you, want, you see in nah. movies. And yeah. gosh, as much as I wanted to kind of give her credit in this moment i really couldn't because like that infatuation doesn't translate to like real lasting love she i think with all respect i think she's got a lot of issues to work out for herself there's something going on there because she's either falling way too hard and too fast or she finds this perfect guy that everybody seems to love but for some reason she's kind of sabotaging it and doesn't believe in it i think she's got just some not like crazy, weird, psychological, nothing like that. I think she's just got some personal stuff to work out in her own life, probably before she can accept, you know, the love of a companion. True. But do we think what she was saying was valid about the fact that she thinks they're still in the honeymoon phase and maybe that they didn't see enough adversity to know if they were really meant for each other? They're all literally in the honeymoon phase. Yeah. yeah it, it, it looks like, not to say she's not wrong or she's not right or whatever, but it's like it does seem like something almost like a backronym. Hey, why you don't feel them? Uh, because of the honeymoon phase. You didn't feel like it was a person. Right. I feel like if you really like the person, you really had the heat, you wouldn't say yes. If you say no because it's too fast, I'll give you credit for that. But the reason that you're not going to do it because times are too good doesn't make sense to me. And poor Kenny. It looked like he was just, you saw at the bar at the moment, his heart crushed. Kenny. And he yeah. had to do a speech to the point where even Kelly's mom was like, yo, he's pretty dope. Well, he doesn't like, have to nice do guy. that. mom said, I love that guy. He's a do- oh, man. I don't know why he didn't have to do that speech. Just as he just kind of took it upon himself. I'm the person, obviously, who's constantly saying this is not a realistic way to fall in love. Right. This is obviously artificial. It makes a lot of sense to not be in love with somebody after knowing them for a few weeks. Uh, so I kind of go back and forth on it. It seemed perfect for them, but it's completely reasonable to say I'm not actually, you know, I don't know where I'm at. I barely know this person. Yeah. But it seems like her reasoning behind it is suspect. It's yeah. suspect to me because she, I wrote down, she literally directly contradicted herself in one sentence talking about, it was after she said that she's not in love. Um, she said it wasn't about the timing. Oh, maybe I wrote that wrong. But she seemed to like 
give that excuse about like the infatuation and not being there but then said it was about timing and her mm. just not being ready it's like i feel like those are two very big different reasons True. I, you, I guess you can never know truly until you actually experience it but one would think if you're gonna go on this show right <laughs> you gotta you imagine okay. that you're ready to do this and what more would she want than kenny there there was zero negatives whatsoever if she at least had a couple things to say that didn't jive or gel in the relationship like okay but everything i, mean, I think she even said all the boxes were checked right, right. so it's a, it's very strange yeah right. I, I think it's something internal that maybe she's not talking about some kind of insecurities or i don't know something along those lines true Poor Kenny, because, you know, up until this point, she did lead him to believe that everything was all good. Well, uh, poor Kenny, but all these people, okay, who got dumped, let's call it, are going to be fine. They're all <laughs> really I? nice people. They're attractive. They seem really cool. They're going to have non-ending DMs of wanting to go on. out and date. Well, well, they I'm are like, not going to be single uh, as uh, long as they no, want Mike, to. Mike, I won't allow, I won't allow you to do that. Come on. These people got their heart broken. They got their hands in the flame. They are still in pain. You're saying, go walk it off. It's still going to hurt. He no. got dunked on his wedding day. He had to do a little speech to make sure he's still face. Yeah, he's going to get someone else, but it's going to hurt for a while. I... Uh, I think that a while is much, much, much truncated because they're like, well, this was a reality show. This is kind of a, a crazy like experience, but now I'm back to my regular job and stuff like that. I wasn't really And then two in years love later, when engaged, it gets released right? on Netflix, it happens again. <laughs> I guess, but I saw pictures of them all hanging right. out at the premiere party and stuff. And of course, just pictures, whatever, but they all look happy and okay. whatever. It, it, there's, there's definitely a difference. You know, you see, we see contestants on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette going home crying, crying that they got sent home after knowing someone for three days. There's no way they actually... Rejection you know, hurts, though. Rejection, yeah. of course. Rejection is never fun. It's never fun at all. Be but um, But again... <laughs> They're not meant to be with these people. You yeah. don't want to be with someone who acts like that towards you. You know what I mean? You know what? Justice for Kenny. I think he like. I'm. I'm not gonna knock Kelly because she, she stood in her truth. <laughs> but yeah, right. But Kenny, man, and I. I personally loved that we got like a kind of a human moment from him for once because he's been so just like straightforward and almost robotic oh, about yeah. how he felt. But to see him get really angry at that producer and say, Jimmy, stop filming Poor me. Jimmy. Yeah. Poor Jimmy. Jimmy's just doing his job, oh, bro. Like, it was, Jimmy's it was really got good. to be there. What do you want Jimmy to do? Yeah, not it. to say that I relished in his pain, but it was a kind of a real moment because that, that's got to hurt. I'm with you there, yeah. there Flobo. Stop of filming. The turnaround time, that sucks. <laughs> There's literally only one thing I can't do that's stop filming, bro. <laughs> we have to make the show. Union says, yeah. Yikes. But, you know, later on, you know, in the episode, he does kind of tell the camera he's going to be okay. And we we seem to agree here on the panel. You're going to be okay, Kenny. You're mm -hmm. fine. Good oh, guy. God. Good All guy. right. We have two couples left. Are we doing the shocker or the... Well, neither of these were surprising, actually. No, they weren't. They kind of went the way that we thought they would. Yeah. With Mark and Jessica, at least. Let's, let's end on the happy note. Let's just end like on the a happy did. note. So let's get into Mark and Jessica. Mm -hmm. I was happy. Jess Mark and Messica. <laughs> yeah. Messica. Messica. Mm. Okay, and again, my frustration with Jessica, I don't know if it's the edit the producer just setting her up to look real, real stupid here, but we get Jessica going into her wedding day saying she's found the over-the-moon World Series knock-it-out-of-the-park type of love. And girl... How could you still Best be friend. saying Not this? I have it. I have it. All these adjectives that you use. I found it. I have it. It's my fiance. Tone it down a little bit. Yeah, I, it, you thank know, you. I mean, come on. Oh, I, She's obviously not watching the same show we're watching. <laughs> no, no one is buying this, yeah. right? And, and I, unless there's some shred of hope where you say, okay, like maybe she truly like came to her senses. But then to flat out just to get up there and be like, no, well, I'm gonna say no. Whoa, why? Why? Yeah. Why are we lying about all this? I I don't know. Does it? It, it makes for a good show. It does. But it could also be just as interesting to hear the real thought process, perhaps. Good point. Uh, I Maybe. think once I get the last couple, I was saying justice for Kenny. I had it out for Mark's mom because she had that look in her face that's like, "You're my son. You're my baby boy. I res I support what you do, but oh baby, you're crying. Your your heart's broken." And he was like, "No, forget it, mom." But Mark should have saw it coming. He should have saw it coming from day one. He, everything was always a pull, pull, pull. Here's our date. Here's our pod recreation. This guy did everything he could. And if she said yes, the pod recreation. if she said yes, it will be almost be like a flawed victory because what what does that have? What does that mean? You got someone that, that said 
struggle for you. But I'm almost glad she said no because Mark and Brian oh, someone to do it with over. Thousand percent yeah. glad she said no. I'm also glad she said no. They were not a good match for each other. Mm-hmm. I think as as much as like we've obviously been like I guess more so Team Mark on this panel because Jessica has just been acting a little crazy. I I think he also has some work to do on himself because regardless of this, the parameters of this experiment, you should not be like begging someone to love you like that. I think he needs to have some more dating, like serious dating experience and really (laughs) learn his value and his worth and act on it. Not just like up here, but be choose someone who's going to treat you the way you deserve. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you're you were dropping science. No, oh, I, you dropped the microphone. There's, I was like, uh, yeah, there's nothing else to say about it. Of course, it's good that they didn't end up together. To be fair and to give her any credit, she shouldn't be settling either. We know she yeah. doesn't like him, so she shouldn't. But she also doesn't need to do all the exposition about how amazing she is, or that she or he is, that she's finally found him. That's unnecessary and just. The, I don't know, anybody who watches this now, the more and more you hear from her, the less authentic she comes off. That's fair. Well, especially because, excuse me, of the moment that we get later on after the fact where she tells the camera that she, you know, she gets really real and honest about why she said no. And she's like, I'll apologize to some people if I need to. I know this was bad, but like, I'm not actually sorry. And it would, I would have never been able to say yes. Right. That's again, we knew uh, this, but like, girl, you, you, you dead wrong for like trying to convince him of that up until the very last minute. Absolutely wretched. And here's why it got me so <laughs> mad. This because it wasn't like you know, give give credit to Kelly. It was like, yo, this is what I like about about homeboy, but this is what I don't like about Kelly. With Jessica, it was always these chains that were always moving. You're mm. too young. Mm-hmm. You're not experienced. Well, I don't like I like kind of like Barnett. Well, I don't like him anymore. Well, what did your family think? You there, there's no one to keep moving around to make sure you're happy to the point where again, like I said earlier, you don't want to be together. So Jessica's sitting there on her high horse, on her tuffet, being like, I don't care. I'm all about it. It was just like, I just felt like someone said, hey, Flobo, thanks for checking out the show, Smack Smack. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was upset. I was mad. I, uh, I, I, love to make I feel bad for all their friends and family. They all they get dressed up and done up and come to this sham wedding. That they're Especially if you go in knowing you're going to say no. Why make all your friends and stuff go through that? I don't know. It's weird. You don't get to know the secrets of the production behind the scenes. What had to happen? Who was already invited? Were they in control of the invites and things like that? Because, man, if I knew I was going to tell somebody no, I wouldn't well, all the no I wouldn't weddings, embarrass my family and stuff and make them come through to the this no thing. The no weddings were really, really small. There were like 30 people. The no they were. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. yeah. But still... I don't know. Maybe they got a nice party out of it after or something. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. At this point, I gotta say, of all the people, the characters that we've met on this show, I'm most interested to see what Jessica's second act is gonna be after this. Like, how do you bounce back in the dating world after the way she like exposed herself and like who <laughs> she really is on this show? You know, we don't have a solid uh, pick for Bachelorette, so ABC. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Find someone who's on Netflix, that's for sure. A little crossover potentially. Wow. Who knows? Mm, All cool. right, we got to get to our happy ending with Lauren and Cameron. Uh, also, very, very predictable. I, th- I think it would have been a big shock if they said no because they've been so perfect the whole time. I'm actually surprised the show tried to drum up a little drama with them because yeah. we knew. Come yeah. on, we knew. <laughs> After Lauren's dad showed up, I was like, okay, this is going down. Yeah. You know? Because that was really the only other major conflict that they had about, you know, their families accepting them. Mm Mm-hmm. And Lauren dad's on Lauren's dad was on board. Her brother showed up to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Beautiful ceremony. Um, but Lauren did tell us from jump she was she didn't know what she was gonna say until the words came out of her mouth. Right. Very dramatic. But I think she knew, personally. Mm -hmm. I I think think she knew. They seem so perfect, all their dates, everything. They seem to be matching up on all different sorts of levels where we can't say that for the other couples. So right. it would have been, like I said, really surprising if they said no. So yeah. it's nice to end the show on a happy ending. It obviously was edited together that way. We had a mm-hmm. really good cliffhanger with Giannina and Damien, and then we end on a happy ending. That, for sure. Yeah, you guys are totally right. It was a happy ending for all. So that was it, guys. That Not was all, all the couples. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is still went back to the altar and yeah, cried. Yeah, he was by himself at night just to cry. Just you know? go home, bro. I, if she just looked so... past the fact that I tried really hard, she might like me again. No, she doesn't like you. Oh, my God. oh <laughs> that will. Di- didn't we all think he was about to run after her? I, I sure please did. Please don't. Just Self-respect, man. Yeah. Self-respect time. 
I'm glad he had a moment. Like I said, he needs to do some serious work I, on himself. Like, I really thought in that moment that she was going to say yes and he was going to say no. I thought he was going to do a Damien. I'm, Ooh. you know what? I don't deserve all the stuff you put me through. I finally, I really reflected on That'd it. That'd be fun. And it's not fair, yeah, for to get a yes out of all this now. These middle fingers of the wind. What? That's not what happened though. Okay, yeah. That's a good point. And I'm glad that you brought up Damien too because reflecting on their relationship. We kind of talked about this off air that Giannina never met his parents, or at least we never saw him meeting right. her parents, True. his parents rather. And there was a very telling moment in their fight early on where she said that his parents said something along the lines of, don't go marrying some whore off of some reality TV show. So maybe that was everything you needed to know. Maybe. You, you real know, early on. It, it's one of those things where I thought that couple was going to say yes, but that was easily of the five, the one that thought they'd be the most miserable. Even more so than Jessica and Mark, <laughs> because they were so different, how they their their communication styles were, and how Damien would fester before yep. even snapping. I just yeah. thought that was just toxic. But So I guess it was all for the best. It is know. all for the best. So is Love Blind? Oh, that was going to be my next question. Oh, um, oh, I, mean, I mean, it begs the question, right? Is Love Blind... The couple's answered, and now it's time for us to answer. I guess I'll go first, because I want to thank you or blame Netflix for this. I, <laughs> walking into this, I thought legitimately love was. I thought that if you really, really care about someone and their vibe and their energy, you can find a connection on some level. I've learned elsewise that after this show, it's not. A lot of things were physical for Mark and Jessica, for Kelly and Kenny, a lot of, even for uh, for, for Kevin Jeanine. and Lauren, or Janine and Damien. Like, mm -hmm. There was always a physical component in there. Mm -hmm. Even the couple you didn't think it would be an issue with with Kelly and Kenny at the end the physical aspect of it totally would derail that ship so scientifically proven in this weird reality show way love is not blind I think you explained it perfectly I'm glad you went first actually unfortunately man <laughs> my heart's broken explain hey ladies perfectly. I'm single but my heart's broken man completely concur <laughs> yeah I mean even despite Amber and Barnett working out and Lauren and Cameron I still don't, I still think love is not blind like yeah. the whole point is they worked out because they are also attracted to each other like that's the whole thing yeah. right again right. again Jessica no real problem with Mark's personality He's short, young, and she's not attracted to him. It's uh, You don't have anybody out there who's going to be saying, oh, I'm so, just emotionally, I'm so connected to my husband or wife. Not attracted to them at all. I think they're pretty <laughs> ugly. But the emotional attraction is just so there. We had to get married. Right, because do you want a love that's blind? Like, is that even something you'd, like... I, you know what it is? It kind of throws in the face of what we learned and we brought up. We want to be seen as good people. So we think of that as, oh, that's right. something that we right. do. And if you're in a situation where someone's perfect but it doesn't look a certain way, you get like, well, he's nice to so, me. But... I think a lot of people say that, but they know. Well, <laughs> we're, also, we're also taking it very, very literally, right? right? So it is true love is blind to things. So you can overlook certain flaws perhaps in somebody or certain things that you might not like because you love them. But if we're talking straight physical appearance... No. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, all your fault, no, no. Netflix. It's all your fault. Wow. I mean... And that's okay. It, that's okay. I mean, it's this is life. You choose. Mm -hmm. You know, love will take you on a roller coaster, but... Love is blind is life. Is it? <laughs> yes. Nick well, Lachey and Vanessa really gave us some life lessons. I would say they the phoned it in on this they one. They deserve to <laughs> be in the finale. That is unfair. Yeah, they didn't even come to work in the last yeah. day of the season. Let us know what you guys think in the comments about Nick uh, Nick and Vanessa Lachey's <laughs> presence on the show. <laughs> really <laughs> hyped up. Hosted by... I mean, do you mean dropping in Yeah, I want twice? that job. I want that job. <laughs> well, since we're at the end of the series, I definitely want to talk about season two because we mentioned it briefly on our last recap. Mm. I know you threw out a theory about Jessica potentially being a two-timer on the show but we realized that can't happen. I mean, that was so dumb of me. I think about it and I was like, wait a minute. Everybody's going to know what she looks like if any of these people go back on the show again. So I definitely think there's going to be a season two. The show is super successful on Netflix. Massive. Uh, I think they're going to open it up more. As we said yesterday, no, yesterday, the last episode, we read in the article that they actually started with 15 men, 15 women. There was a lot more people. Yeah. So I think they're going to open up their production capabilities to handle a lot more potential couples. And we can see some really interesting pairs. True. We can see some different backgrounds. Uh, we can see any representation with Asian Americans uh, this go around. or true. People with disabilities. That'd be kind of interesting to see if that's part of the experiment. Definitely. I mean, I wanted to ask as well, because we kind of complained about it a little bit in the beginning, that there was so much going on, we didn't know how to like stay grounded with the couples. Yeah. And then quickly that changed. So 
I don't know if I'm mad at that production decision to to keep it to what we saw because if there if we did see all 15 couples, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know that we could have done this in 10 episodes. True. It is, yeah. That knowing what we know now, I'm not sure exactly how they would have, but. I do think in the first episode, I would have appreciated the explanation that we read in the article. Here are the 30 people, and we've dated down to the top 10 or something Mm. like that. Okay, and now let's watch it past then. That would have been interesting to kind of see. Yeah, fair. Flo, but what other changes would you like to see going into season two? I think that's something we can talk about. I I think having, again, having some of the rules up front would be great. Say, look, only five are moving on, or only choosing six or seven. That's great. Because look, the first episode, we sat there, Mm. and we tried this graph of everyone that was ever met mentioned thinking, was everyone important? Oh no, right. half the people I've ever seen again. And who is Rory. LC? Yeah, who yeah. is LC? She was actually my favorite. But you know what I'm saying? So I think as long as those are more clear, I'd be on board. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those are definitely very like logistical things. I just know for myself, um, going into season two, I if we have a dynamic like how we did with Jessica, Amber, and Barnett, I do love the idea that the couples get to stay together in Mexico at some point and kind of Kind of like break the seal on the experiment, let everyone see each other rather. So I hope that stays for season two. Oh yeah, two. we need that drama. Mm-hmm. I also want to see. I don't. I don't know. I guess I would want to see maybe them go back to their jobs at some point and see like some you know coworker water cooler talk. You know more. <laughs> we don't more get... conversations like with the people in their lives. We don't get that on Married at First Sight. They go back to their jobs, but we don't see anything really with their outside lives except for like the handful of friends like you saw here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they would go into, because then you gotta get corporate permission and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. But more interaction of them just in general in real life maybe, yeah. Yeah, do we wanna see this experiment any longer, shorter? Wow. If you're doing the five couples, I think 10 episodes is perfect. But uh, if you want to do like more couples and have people like, you know, have an A squad and B squad where you have like these like two like weaving storylines, it'd be cool to have like 15 or so to see how this group is going to have their wedding decision this week and this group's going to have it next week. It'd be kind of fun. Yeah. I like some of the middle episodes, like I said, I thought dragged a little bit. But overall, I like the theming. Here's the bachelor party, bachelorette party one. Here's the picking tuxes and dresses. Here's the honeymoon stuff. So. Ten seems pretty good. How oh, idea? Here we go. Is it? This is gonna be great. It, that was a brainstorm. Or really lame. All right. Uh, is it a possibility to have like maybe after the retreat a chance to go back to your second choice in the pods? You can have a list of pod mates. Wait, like a, you, like wait, a, you change your choice? Yes. Wow, hmm. that's dangerous. That'd be a golden like. This is not working that would, out. That would literally be love is not blind because you saw the person and were like, nah. Well, Carlton and I did things of them, them ending and then having a no thread. It might have a diamond went back and said, hey, look, my second choice was actually Rory. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. For people who didn't or work out somehow didn't like that. It. Yeah. Uh, That's an idea. I'm not yeah, saying it's fully baked. Yeah. This thing's fully baked. Well, I, I'm glad that you brought or, up Carlton and Diamond again because that's something I want to see on next season. I definitely yeah. want to see another, you know, queer couple, yeah. you know, explore these themes because that was like a huge conversation starter and I think challenged a lot of people's understandings or mindsets behind marriage and what should be disclosed beforehand. Or playing off what your suggestion was, if all the people in the experiment who didn't match up, they get to go on the honeymoon and you say, okay, you did get to know a lot of people. Well, now we'll just let you guys kind of mix and mingle and see if something else happens. And maybe, I mean, because isn't that kind of the point of the show? We want to see people get together in uncommon circumstances. So maybe a couple of people do find love when you actually give them a chance to talk like off camera and just be chill and mingle around. Spin off series. That could be cool. And then they can kind of support the other main couples or something like that. Yeah. Well, it, it, see, it, would, it would seem like it would be two different test groups proving yeah. that, like yeah. that's what right. is or isn't. <laughs> that's Cool. At the same time, that would be an interesting yeah. twist. More Nick Lachey. Mm. Yeah, as long as he comes to more Nick Lachey. Definitely more, more Nick Lachey. More Nick Vanessa Lachey. More Vanessa. Well, well, I think we've ex- explored almost every possible outcome, you know, yeah. or idea going to season two. I'll be happy to see how the producers shake things up or yeah. not. But I, it's safe to say I'm hooked. Are you guys hooked? Yeah, I have yeah. one question, though. I'm here. Uh, this is your opinion. If you had all the money, all the budget in the world, would you release like, on that Bachelor, Bachelor, that kind of cycle, or just two shows a year? Or would you have the whole calendar year go by? Or is it something that doesn't really... Because I feel like this is the kind of show that would be great for the winter, for around Valentine's Day, and then the holidays, too. Or like even like a fall and the spring kind of version. Hmm. Something like this, I think, is relatively inexpensive to produce. I think they could easily do two cycles a year. Nope. Yeah. I'm down for that. 
<laughs> Dang, we just got a new reality TV franchise. There's enough, con- there's enough content. Coming there, through. New couples, just like we see in Bachelor and all these shows, they produce new drama, new storylines, just from the essence of being different people. So it can support it, I think. Ooh, hot take, maybe a spinoff about what happens to the couples who do make it out of this. Because as one, uh, I think it was a after. fan submitted article that we all saw <laughs> that these couples were actually together for... <laughs> Quite a while. This was filmed in 2018. Mm-hmm. You're, you're getting into the zone of like, I forgot we actually even did that. <laughs> and, you know, I'm right? to live in my life again. But the same way we have before the 90 days, 90 day mm-hmm. fiance, 90 day fiance, happily ever after, I would be dying to see. Married at first sight, happily ever couples... after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And cool. the ones that don't work out too. Like, are you hitting them up on Instagram, sliding back in the DMs, trying to meet up, make it work again? Who knows? I want to know. What is Rory up to? This is for Rory. Justice for worry. Oh, man. Well, maybe it'll be like bonus content for next season. Yeah. <laughs> By yeah. the way. Update. Here's Giannina. <laughs> Selfies. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we'll be keeping you guys. Um, well, well, we'll be keeping updated on everything Love is Blind. In the meantime, until our show comes back, um, until we officially get greenlit for season two. Cross the fingers. But in the awesome. meantime, guys, it's been so fun recapping the show too. with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, Netflix. Thank you for our new guilty pleasure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> until next time, you guys can catch me hosting The Bachelor After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. And you can keep up with me on social media at Christine Bean. And you can follow me over at Twitter at Flobo Voice, on Instagram at Flobita, and of course, Flobita.com, Netflix. You've done corrupted my mind. These people are used to not seeing each other, so some of them should definitely go on the next season of The Circle. Oh. Guys, <laughs> my name is Mike Feeling. You can follow me everywhere at Mike Feeling. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. We love you, whether we see you or not. (laughs) Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.